The chlorination procedure involves introducing a measured amount of chlorine solution into the well to kill off bacteria in the entire distribution system. This includes the well, the distribution pipes, and throughout the house and pressure tank. The process can be broken down into nine basic steps. Step one. First, you'll need to store a backup supply of water for your household needs while your well is being chlorinated. You'll need enough water to get you through about 48 hours, as the procedure may take that long. Step two. Next, you'll calculate the amount of water needed for the chlorination procedure. Determine the amount of water sitting in your well by subtracting the non-pumping or static water level from the total depth of the well. You will find this information on your drilling report, or if you don't have one, your drilling contractor can take measurements of your well. For example, if your well measures 210 feet deep and has a non-pumping water level of 40 feet, you know you have 170 feet of water sitting in your well. By using this table, you can calculate the amount of water needed by taking the number of feet of water in your well and multiplying that number by the water needed per foot of water sitting in your well, based on the diameter of your well casing. So if your well casing is 6 inches in diameter, you'll multiply 170 feet of water sitting in the well by 2.5 to get 425 gallons of water needed to do the shock chlorination procedure. That amount of water is twice the volume of water that sits in your well when it's not being pumped. The reason for this extra volume of water is that you make enough chlorine solution to kill bacteria inside the well casing and out into the aquifer. Be sure this water is stored in a suitable clean container near the wellhead. Step three. To calculate the amount of chlorine needed, we'll refer back to the table again. Based on the 6-inch diameter of your well, you will multiply 170 feet of water sitting in the well by 0.04 litres if using domestic bleach. For example, 170 times 0.04 equals 6.8 litres of domestic bleach to be added to the 425 gallons of stored water will make you a 200 part per million chlorine solution. Add this measured amount of chlorine to the amount of stored water calculated in step two. Only this amount of chlorine is needed. More is not better. Adding chlorine solution to the well increases the pH of water. Chlorine is most effective at killing bacteria when the pH stays below 5.3. As the pH increases, chlorine becomes less effective and more corrosive. Your licensed drilling contractor will have specialized chemicals designed to lower the pH and optimize the effectiveness of the chlorine. When the chlorination procedure is done on an annual basis as part of your routine maintenance program, a 200 part per million chlorine solution is sufficiently strong enough to keep nuisance bacteria in check, but not so strong as to cause corrosion damage to your pitless adapter, piping, or submersible pump. Step 4. Before adding the chlorine solution to the well, your driller will turn off the power supply to the pump and remove the well cap to inspect the electrical connection for damage. He'll make any necessary repairs before proceeding. If you have any water treatment systems, be sure to bypass them to prevent damage from the chlorine. Slowly introduce the chlorine solution into the well to minimize disturbance, particularly if the well is low yielding or tends to pump sediments. This may take a few minutes to several hours. The well will only accept the solution at the same rate as the water pumps out of the well. Move the hose in a circular motion so the chlorinated water disinfects all sides of the well casing. Step 5. If you are chlorinating to kill off harmful bacteria, you need to push the chlorinated water throughout the entire distribution system to ensure no contamination remains. To do this, open each hydrant and indoor faucet, including, if possible, the lines to all appliances you consume water from, such as a fridge that has a water line for the ice maker and the dishwasher. Start with any outside taps, then work your way through the house. Flush all toilets and refill the hot water tank. Run the water until you can smell chlorine at each outlet or until there is a slippery feel to the water. If you're chlorinating as part of your annular well maintenance program to keep nuisance bacteria in check, 
And if you're concerned that chlorine might cause corrosion damage to old piping, it's not necessary to push the chlorinated water through the distribution pipes in your home. There should be enough residual chlorine in the well water at the end of the chlorination procedure to kill off any IRBs or SRBs residing in these pipes. Step six. Now all the taps should be shut off and the chlorine solution left in the well and distribution system for eight to 48 hours. The longer the contact time, the better the results. Make sure no one, including animals, drinks water from the well during this wait period. Step seven. To flush the chlorine solution out of the well, open your outside faucets one at a time and run the water slowly until the chlorine smell disappears. Don't divert the water into any drains and be sure to direct it away from sensitive plants or landscaping. Avoid running the water into or onto the septic system. Be careful not to over pump your well, particularly if it's a low yielding well. Be patient, flush the chlorine solution out of the well slowly and watch for sediment. It may be necessary to stop and start the pump. Your well system should be equipped with a flow control device to ensure the rate of yield from the pump is no higher than the rate which the aquifer replenishes the well. When you pump the well at a higher rate, you over pump the well and possibly cause damage. If you're chlorinating a well that has not been cleaned for a long time, do not be alarmed at the amount of chunks and bits of slime gunk that comes out. Step eight, run the hot and cold taps inside your house to remove the chlorine solution from the hot water tank and the distribution system. Run the water until the smell of chlorine disappears. Trace amounts of chlorine remaining in the toilet tank should not harm your septic tank, so it can stay there until needed. Step nine, any filtration or softening equipment that has been bypassed for this procedure should now be placed back into service. And remember, Filtration and water treatment equipment also need regular maintenance based on your water chemistry and well water conditions. You can work with your drilling contractor to set up a routine maintenance schedule. Is shock chlorination always effective? Sometimes chlorinating an older well that's not been subjected to annual chlorination as part of a routine well maintenance program doesn't seem very effective at reducing the symptoms of nuisance bacteria. But remember, chlorine can only kill bacteria it comes into contact with. Excessive buildup of biological and mineral deposits on the well casing may need to be loosened and removed first. Your licensed drilling contractor can use mechanical scrubbing or chemical cleaning techniques to expose the bacteria before adding the chlorine solution. However, when a well is too old, Aggressive cleaning and chlorinating might just uncover existing holes in steel casing and speed up inevitable well failure. Sometimes your money is better spent properly decommissioning an older well and drilling a new replacement. If you have your well chlorinated on an annual basis, you stand a good chance of keeping nuisance bacteria in check. It's much the same thing as servicing your car engine. If you regularly change the oil, you can expect your engine to continue running smoothly. If you chlorinate your well after a lab test shows the presence of harmful coliform or E. coli bacteria and repeat testing shows that bacteria are still present, you will need to determine where they're coming from. Until you eliminate the source of contamination, you will continue to have a bacteria problem in your well and your water will not be safe to drink. The shock chlorination procedure is just one example of the kinds of information available to homeowners through the Working Well program. For more information, see our website.